Good morning. It's Tuesday, uh, of September, August the uh, August the thirteenth, two thousand and thirteen. I'm Alan Barry Labucan from uh, Gorecom News TV. I'm the uh, chief market commentator for Gorecom.com. And uh, on today's show, we uh, it's our morning um, uh, in the news uh, program where we go through uh, various different news releases try to find the best ones that uh, stand out from uh, the news that they've had and uh, hopefully help you find some good companies to do your research on and uh, find some winners in there as well. Uh, on today's show, I think i got about six or seven companies to talk about, lots of news uh, on the, um, on the, uh, on, to talk about, and uh, we'll get right to it. Uh, the first company I'm going to talk about this morning is a company called Gold Reach. Gold Reach Resources uh, um, announced that they, the headline is intersects 20, 227 meters of 0.52% copper equivalent, including 90 meters of 0.58 copper equivalent at the AUX deposit. Uh, the news is from results for holes uh, uh, 80 to 86 in their AUX 13 series. Uh, from Gold Reach's Ox deposit. Uh, this pro deposit is located four kilometers north northeast of the company's West Seal discovery, and both the deposits occur on the company's 100% owned Utsa property located adjacent to the producing Huckleberry Mine south of Smithers, British Columbia. Uh, the highlights from the drilling, uh, long intercept of strong mineralization, uh, that's the uh, hole that they had in their uh, headline. Uh, they um, they increased the size of the mineralized zone. The mineralized zone at Ox is now being traced over a curved length of 860 meters, with widths of 100 to 200 meters and depths of 130 to 250 meters. So a very large tonnage target there. Uh, its near surface mineralization could extend further northeast under the pond adjacent to the intrusive contact attack. Uh, targets immediately adjacent to the aux deposit are being drilled to test for addition, additional mineralized extensions. Uh, the 2013 drilling at the aux deposit is focused on infill and expanding near surface mineralization along a higher grade core that runs the length of the system. There's a good quote in the press release from Dr. Shane Ebert who is the president of Gold Reach, and he commented, and I quote, drilling at Ox continues to intersect strong zones of mineralization that start near surface and are showing very favorable geometry for potential open pit exploitation. The 2013 program has expanded the size of the mineralized zone and has added a lot of more higher grade material. The mineralized zone has been traced over a curved length of 860 meters, with widths of 100 to 200 meters and to depths of 130 to 250 meters. Drilling in aux will be complete within the next few weeks, and once all the drill results are in, the company will initiate a resource update. A representative sample of aux mineralization has been sent for detailed metallurgical studies." End quote. Uh, the stock symbol on that on, on um, gold reach is grv.v. Um, uh, you know what I like about this project is that uh, it's a um, uh, it's a large tonnage uh, open pit type target, um, and uh, they're getting good grades uh, with copper and uh, also uh, some precious metals numbers in there, which will help bring down the uh, copper price uh, if it were to go into production. So there's a lot of good things going on with Gold Reach. And uh, I think it'll be a good one for you to do your homework on. Uh, another company that I uh, wanted to talk about today is uh, Caledonia Mining. Uh, the headline from their uh, news release is Caledonia Mining Q2 and first half year 2013 results and confirmation of management conference call. Uh, they announced the operating financial results for the second quarter and first half. Caledonia owns a 49% interest in the blanket mine in Zimbabwe. Operational and financial information is a 100% um, basis unless indicated otherwise. 
So that's uh, in these operating highlights. Um, gold produced in the second quarter was 11,000. Uh, first quarter 2013 um, and was ahead of plan target of 10,000 ounces. Uh, gold production in the quarter increased from the previous quarter due to the planned increased uh, mine production throughput in response to the lower grade gold, or lower gold price. Uh, gold produced in the first half was 22,000 ounces. Um, and uh, gold production for the third quarter has started well. Um, production in um, uh, in July was approximately 4,400 ounces, 35% uh, higher than the planned monthly target of 3,300 ounces. Management believes that Blanket is on course to produce approximately 44,000 ounces in 2013, 10% higher than the previous guidance of 40,000 ounces. Um, uh, they talked about uh, blankets operating cost per ounce in the quarter was lower than the preceding quarter and 2012 too, due to the higher production and stable input costs. The all-in sustaining cost per ounce has been broadly stable over the preceding 12, 18 months, reflecting the generally lower operating cost per ounce but higher level of capital investment. Blankets all-in cost includes investment in projects to increase production. So their um, their numbers have gone up in their um, uh, all-in cost, but as they mentioned, that has to do with uh, they're including the uh, cost of their uh, in, in, uh, investments to increase production. Um, the uh, they sold uh, gold at an average of thirteen hundred sixty-eight dollars per ounce. Uh, they had gross profit for the quarter of 8.6 million. Um, basic earnings per share uh, for the quarter was 5.8 cents per share. Uh, Caledonia has cash and qu cash equivalents of 22.5 million. Um, there's a quite a lengthy quote. I'm not gonna um, not gonna go into it all. Um, but uh, it, it highlights all the work that uh, from their um, uh, president and chief executive officer and it goes into all the work that they're doing. It's uh, quite extensive as I mentioned quote um, and it'll give you a good idea of all the work that they're doing right now and uh, where they see go things going um, with the um, uh, with their mine, the blanket mine in Zimbabwe. Uh, the uh, symbol on that company is CAL on the uh, Toronto Exchange. The next uh, company is Argonaut Gold. They announced their second in quarter 2013 revenue of 44.9 million and net income of 6.5 million. Uh, this is their uh, June uh, 30th quor second quarter ended. Uh, in, sorry, ended in June. Uh, June 30th of uh, 2013. Um, they've got a lot of highlights here that I don't think I can get through them all. Um, capital expenditures of 31 million on mineral properties, plant and equipment. Record tons crushed and loaded to their east pad. West side pad 8 loading continues with ongoing construction during 2013. Overland conveying construction initiated with completion an operation expected in the third quarter. Um, they uh, at their lock that was from their El Calistilo operations from their La Colorado uh, operations. Pre-stripping continues at the pit. New crushing system has been installed and expected to be complete and operational in the third quarter of 2013. Uh, San Antonio and Magino proteining process continues. Subsequent to the quarter end, the company acquired the rights to a 3% smelter royalty on certain La Colorado mining concessions for $3.6 million. Uh, the royalty was assessed at $10.3 million in the economic analysis in the La Colorado uh, Project NI43101 preliminary economic assessment dated December 30th. 2011. There's a quote from Pete, Pete Doherty, who is the President Chief Exo Executive Officer of Argonaut Gold, and he stated, and I quote, this was a tremendous quarter 
and first half of the year for the company. New production highs were achieved while implementing new capital expansion programs. The majority of capital expenditures at El Castillo and La Colorada have been incurred in the first half of the year. El Castillo pad construction will continue through the year and construction of the overland conveyor expected to be completed and operational by the end of the third quarter. The La Colorado uh, crusher has been installed as it, and is in the commissioning stages. Cash costs at El Castillo have been relatively constant since inception in spite of inflationary pressures. The 2013 capital ex expenditure project is aimed at reducing operating costs and providing production go growth at both mines." End quote. Um, then they have some more about their financial results. They uh, had revenue of $44.9 million from gold sales of 31,756,000 ounces, um, which was up from the previous 2012 when they had 37.5 million uh, um, uh, revenue from gold sales and 23,000 ounces. So they've uh, increased their production quite significantly. Uh, cash costs are 643 uh, compared with 620 in the same pro period of the prior year. Uh, gross profit was 16 million, uh, which was down from the uh, second quarter of 2012, but the price of gold has been down pretty, pretty significantly as well. Uh, cash and cash equivalents was 139 million at June 30th, 2013. Capital expenditures in the second quarter was 31 million, uh, primarily as a result of infrastructure improvement at El Castillo and La Colorado mines. Uh, the stock symbol for Argonaut is AR dot uh, on the Toronto Exchange. So again, you know, it looks like uh, e this company is handling the uh, lower price of gold uh, quite well. They're building up their cash position. They're building more of their mines. Uh, that's the kind of stuff that I think will pay, pay big dividends down the road as the uh, price of gold uh, improves, which I think it will do between here and the end of the year. I think we're going to see gold at quite uh, significantly higher prices, so that will help them out in their third quarter and in their fourth quarter, and um, they're already performing quite nicely as it is, so that's a good one to um, to take a look at. Now, uh, yesterday after uh, after we did our morning show, there was a, a, f a few news releases came out in the afternoon yesterday, so I want to go over those as well. Uh, one of those uh, came from Lakeshore Gold. Lakeshore Gold reported record production, lower operating costs in the second quarter of 2013, and commissioning of mill expansion progressing. Uh, they released their uh, financial and operating results for the second quarter of tw 2013. Key highlights of the results include record gold poured at 31,800 ounce, ounces in the second quarter with record gold production of 30,000 ounces and gold sales totaling 27,000 ounces at an average sale price of $1,409 per ounce. Uh, cash operating costs were $908, uh, including uh, $28 per ounce re related to royalties. Uh, the uh, total all-in cost, sustaining cost is um, uh, $1,257 and $1,398 respectively. I think that that's probably because they're uh, spending money on expansion costs. Uh, capital investment during the first six months of 2013 was a total to $66 million. So there you go. That's why uh, you add that to the um, all-in costs, and uh, that's what would affect that. Uh, representing close to three-quarters of target capital investment for the year. So the company is very aggressive in, uh, in expanding. Uh, pro excellent progress advancing their mill expansion towards completion. Uh, with commissioning starting near the end of July and the new crush and grinding circuit now operational, ramping up to 3,000 tons per day. Earnings from mine operations for the second quarter and six months of 1.8 million and 5.7 million respectively, uh, compared with 3.2 and 4.5 million 
in the same period. So that's gone down. Obviously, that has to do with the uh, lower price of uh, gold uh, in, uh, with compared to those quarters of last year. Um, again, I'm, I'm bullish that this price is going to turn, is turning, has turned, has hit bottom and is turning around. Uh, 2013 guidance maintained. Uh, they expect to produce around 120,000 ounces uh, of gold, uh, 120,000 and 135,000 ounces of gold. Cash operating costs sold in the range of 800 to 875, and capital investment of approximately 900 mil or 90 million. Uh, Tony McCooch, uh, who always does a good job, he's very thorough in his quotes. There's lots. Of, there's a big quote here. I don't want to go into all of it. You can find it on their press release. Um, but, um, you know, this company is working hard to advance their mine. Uh, they're spending lots of money. They've got, co they've got uh, revenue coming in from production. The stock symbol is LSG on the Toronto Exchange. Um, Sandgold uh, reported their second quarter results. Um, they produced 22,526 ounces of gold uh, with an average milled grade of 5.05 grams per ton with cap operating costs of 700 and cash operating costs of $783 per ounce of gold sold. They uh, generated income from operations of 3.4 million. Um, be, they had a cash con contribution from operations before changes in non-cash working capital of five million and recognized a quarter quarterly total and comprehensive loss of 3.6 million. Uh, company initiated a number of cost-cutting initiatives during the qu quarter in response to recent at mar adverse market conditions. Obviously, those adverse market conditions are cheaper prices of gold. Uh, I think that that's going to, again, I think that that's going to improve um, compared with their second quarter last year. Um, they reduced their total cash operating cost by $2.7 million. They reduced their capital expenditures by $3.9 million and general administrative expenses by $2.6 million uh, uh, while maintaining production levels. So those are some very encouraging numbers on the cash reduction, uh, reducing their cash, they're, you know, getting close to $9 million there. Uh, I think it is $9 million of reduced costs. Um, there's a quote from Ian Berzins, who is Sandgold's president, CEO, and chief operating officer. He uh, said, and I quote, I'm very pleased with the progress we have made this quarter in improving grade and stabilizing production levels while reducing costs across all aspects of the company. I anticipate continued improvement in the company's financial performance through the remainder of the year as the full effect of our cost cutting initiatives takes hold, end quote. Um, they also mentioned that they have um, done a $10.4 million uh, um, flow through funding that will handle cover their exploration um, costs uh, as they pursue a number of uh, prospective drill targets. One thing that's very good with this company, they know how to find a lot of gold and they hit a lot of high grade gold. Uh, their symbol is SGR.T. I like that they're bringing down their costs. That'll help them turn profits in the future. I think it's a very smart move. Obviously the uh, price of gold has forced that move, but um, we'll see what happens for the company in the future. Uh, Sandstorm uh, Metals and Energy released their unaudited results for the second quarter ended June 30th. Uh, second quarter summary acquired a 1.2% base metal net smelter return royalty on the Prairie Creek project in the Northwest Territories of Canada from Canadian Zinc for $6.8 million. Net loss of $13.4 million primarily due to a non-cash impairment charge of 12.1 million related to the natural grass stream with Thunderbird Energy Corp. Sandstorm's uh, President and Chief Executive Officer Nolan Watson commented, and I quote, 
during and subsequent to the end of the second quarter, the financial challenges facing some of our partner companies have been at the forefront. We have been ex working extremely hard to maximize value for his shareholders in the current market climate and continue will continue to do so, end quote. Um, this is an interesting company. They only have 33 million shares out. They're trading at around $1.35. Um, they are a royalty company, so they go out there and they buy royalties, uh, which gives them the right to, often the right to buy uh, certain commodities. Gold is one of the commodities um, at, at cheaper uh, than, uh, than um, uh, at cheap prices because they help with the uh, capital costs of bu building a mine. Uh, and that's a very interesting concept. Over the years, uh, there have been some well-managed royalty companies that have made a lot of money. And uh, this is one that I'm interested in, SND on the venture, uh, on the venture exchange is their uh, symbol. And the final company today is Fortuna. Uh, Fortuna Silver Mines, uh, they reported their uh, second quarter of 2013. They had revenue of $30.1 million, uh, cash generated from operations before changes in working capital of $5.9 million, a net loss of $10.6 million in the second quarter of 2013, reflecting a non-cash pre-tax impairment charge of $15 million. Uh, the cash uh, impairment charges related to the effect of declining silver prices on the carrying value of the K Loma mine in Peru. Um, you know, I, I th I'm very bullish on the price of gold. I'm also very bullish on the price of silver, so this uh, doesn't concern me too much. Um, the second quarter highlights the sales of 30.1 million, cash flow, flow from operations before changes. In net app working cash working capital of 5.9 million, adjusted net loss of 100,000, cash position including short-term investments of 48.4 48.4 million, and an untapped credit facility of 40 million, uh, silver and gold production of 1.74 million ounces of silver and 5,183 thousand ounces of gold respectively uh, cash cost per ounce of pay, payable silver net to byproduct credits was seven dollars and fifty eight cents uh, an unit cash cost per ton was in line with guidance so you know they've got a pretty low cost of production of their silver uh, there's a, a quote from Jorge Ganoza who's the president and chief executive officer he comment and I quote the company is taking the necessary measures to reduce corporate general and administrative expenses and capital and operating cost expenditures to be better positioned in the current price environment. The current year is a capital intensive year at both of our mines, but we have been able to reduce our capital and exploration budgets for 2013 by 16.4 million down to 50.6 million by restricting our focus to critical path and sustainable built sustainability projects. Our investments in exploration, mine development, and infrastructure over the prior year, years has permitted us to tighten our capital allocation going forward and project a consolidated all-in cash cost of approximately $13 per ounce of silver net of byproducts but for the next three years. So they're able to keep that, I go on, sorry, I'll, I'll comment on this quote later. I go on with the quote. Additionally, the high grade silver gold Trinidad North discovery at the San Jose mine will provide the potential for sourcing of higher margin production starting in early 2015. Current plans call for initiating development of the Trinidad zone in 2014. End quote. Now I'll comment on uh, uh, some of his comments. The one thing that I like is that $13 per ounce of silver. Um, you know, there's a, a very healthy uh, uh, margin in there, even after the price of silver has come down quite a bit. And so I think that we're now on the upswing of the price of silver, which will only increase to their um, uh, to their uh, um, margins. And uh, this is a real silver-focused uh, company. 
They've got a very strong management team that has generational type um, management that's been uh, experienced in production uh, of silver down in South America for many years. I've been following this company. I like their focus on silver and the strong management team. Uh, their stock symbol is FVI on the Toronto Exchange. So again, another day that we had, uh, you know, a lot of news out. Uh, it is the dog days of summer, yet these companies, there's a lot of companies putting out a lot of really good news. And uh, I think that we're going to have a much stronger market um, for these resource companies going into the end of the, throughout the rest of this year. And uh, I think that this uh, summertime is creating some real opportunities uh, to find some high quality companies at really cheap prices uh, that will have a good run in between here and the end of the year. On that note, before making any investment decisions, it's important for you to speak with your financial advisors and do your homework. Uh, again, you can join us on the show Monday through Thursdays um, every morning and uh, and I try to find a lot of good companies for you to do your research on and to uh, ultimately find some uh, good investment opportunities in that mix. On that note, you have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.